All right, guys, welcome back to another day here at PA Farms. Uh, you'll notice I have the spot sprayer on the 685. Uh, I did put the three-point arms back on. Uh, and I finally got a chance to go and do some spot spraying here. We finally had a little bit of a break in the weather. Uh, I do have some weeds coming up in between the fields that I don't like. I don't want them going to seed. So I had put this on, and I did that the other day. Um, but what we have on the uh, schedule for today... A lot of guys have been asking for a soybean field tour. They want to see the soybeans, uh, especially some of my viewers from the UK uh, wanted to see the soybeans. Uh, so let's do that today. All right, so just like the corn, I want to show you the good and the bad with the soybeans this year. Uh, this road was washed pretty good with the uh, rain that we had, the two foot of rain. Um, not as bad as other years. I don't know what, I think there's more grass on it now than there used to be. This was pretty well graded into a, just a road with uh, like breaker rock or like a shaley type of stone on it. Um, and there was no grass on it. So it used to wash a lot worse than it does. I've been just letting the grass come up on it and I don't care if it turns into a grassy road just, just to uh, hold the dirt here. Yeah, there's a gutter on this side. So let me get up here to the soybeans. I have no soybeans down below this year. They're all up on top of the hill. Uh, so let's uh, take a look and see. I haven't really looked at them that much. All right, so this will be the first stop on the tour here. Uh, this is the field of soybeans that I have here. Now this field, actually, you've seen me bale hay in that field right there. And that's the field that wraps all the way around. It's a huge half circle on a contour. Um, it's probably, I don't know, a quarter mile or more long <laughs> until you get from this end to the other end. This one is even longer. This one is down lower from that field and this wraps all the way around in contours. So this ground is extremely rocky, um, but it is half decent growing uh, soil. So just taking a look, I'll just look at the ends here. I have a lot of ladybugs on my soybeans this year, and I'm happy to see that. Those are uh, benefic beneficial insects, because um, I don't know that we have a problem with aphids. I've, I've seen very few soybean aphids in our area. Um, I don't know anybody that sprays for aphids. Um, and actually, to this point, I have never sprayed any insecticide on the farm. Um, our worst bugs are the Japanese beetles and the grasshoppers. And the past two years, they have not been a major problem here uh, that I've seen. I mean, we've had some grasshoppers, um, but not, <laughs> not like plagues of them that some people have. Even the Japanese beetles haven't been that bad, so no insecticide needed here. Um, just walk in. Now, these are on 15-inch rows. I don't want to step any down. They are a Pioneer, uh, Roundup Ready. Yeah, there's a Japanese beetle, one. So just scanning around this whole area, looking down the rows, I see one Japanese beetle. Uh, there's not as many holes in the leaves, there's one, but. The majority of them uh, look pretty good. Uh, I'm not seeing much insect damage so far. Uh, just looking for any type of aphids, nothing. Um, White mold in our area, where I'm at, is, is not a big deal either. Uh, basically, if the field has it, you're gonna have it. Um, and I don't know too many guys that do. Uh, that's not to say they don't have it, I just am not aware of it. So these are, they're above my knee. Now I am six foot two, so everybody uses themselves if you don't have a tape measure. Uh, this spot looks very good, there's flowers. So I'm happy with these beans. They better do well. These beans were $88 a bag, which is a can be pretty expensive for some guys. I know a lot of guys are buying $50 bag beans, um, but these were pretty expensive. So, and the weeds. I am just looking out here, and I don't see any weeds. And that three pre-program that I had this year that I tried versus uh, last year, um, amazing it does work uh, if anybody needs an example of a weed control for no-till and soybeans 
Prowl, Metribuzin, and Valor, all used together with some, um, surf <coughs> excuse me, surfactant, and I might have even put a little Roundup in yet, I don't know. Um, so that was the three pre, and it's just clean, it's amazing. Um, Ag PhD said it works, and I took them at their word, and it, it worked. I'm very happy. There are some places where the weeds escaped, but um, that was more my fault in the post. The post emerge, um, I used, all I used was first rate and roundup together, and I didn't, I don't think I used enough first rate, but the weeds were nowhere near. With the rain that we've had this year, uh, this is nice and canopy. This is a beautiful spot in this field, but it's not all like this. So just looking at the leaves, there's no holes. Very little insect pressure. Um, I'm happy. Uh, it's not the case like that every year. This year it worked out pretty good. Uh, they are wavy like the corn. Uh, they are high and then they get low and that might have to do with the weather. Uh, there's one or two weeds poking through. But they don't look too good. <laughs> they look a little scraggly there. So, all right, guys. Yeah, this wraps all the way around. This is if you start here with the combine till you got to the other end, uh, going in a contour on a half circle, I it probably take you 15 minutes or more. So maybe 20 minutes. So yeah, this I, and I have not looked at these fields very often. I've just been, I haven't gone in and done very much. There's another ladybug. Yeah, there's a lot of ladybugs in the soybeans and I'm happy to see them because so ladybugs eat aphids. So, all right, on to the next field. All right, so I was a little upset about how things were looking here. I went, uh, we went out yesterday for a day away and I got to drive through different parts of Pennsylvania. And what I saw was a lot of weedy soybeans. I saw a lot of, uh, I'm gonna shut the truck off right here because I'm gonna go for a pretty long walk here. I saw a lot of beans that were weedy, and I saw a lot of corn that was very short, very wavy. Um, some guys, it looked like they had to replant even after one of the earlier storms that we had, and their corn was just so short. I don't know how it's going to make it uh, unless it's like a 75-day corn, or if they're going to use it for silage. I just don't know. Um, but <laughs> I'm feeling a little better about how my stuff looks. It's very wavy, and I just don't know what to say, but um, that's, it's everybody. You feel a lot better when it's not just you, it's everybody. Now, in my valley, I'm seeing a lot more lime green corn than anything. The stands aren't too bad, but a lot of guys were able to plant earlier than me. So let's look at this bean field over here. All right, I want to show the good and the bad on this tour. I'm not just going to highlight because I do have some bad spots. Uh, and you know, this is starting to recover. Um, you see how wavy this is there it's nice there it's short there it's nice i hope it's showing up on the camera there it's short there it's nice it's just so wavy here um, these beans had cupped leaves um, they were cupped and it was because of the herbicide i put on the corn um, status has dicamba in it and i don't know if that is going to affect the beans spraying right next to them uh, the status i don't know i'm not a can't be a total expert on everything, but this spot here all along the corn had cupped leaves. So you can see here. So it did get a little bit of damage. Now it's odd that here, it's just the way it must have settled. I, I'm guessing that's what happened. Because if we walk up here a few rows, and it, they're beautiful. They're exactly like what we just looked at. So, and then there's a spot, it, it has to be herbicide. It, it must have drifted out through here or uh, settled in this area. Um, it's just it's just what happened this year. Um, there, <laughs> maybe there's something to learn from next year, but all right, so I have this hay field down there and I have this strip here. This is uh, wide enough for two passes with the combine. This strip has to stay here or else you're not gonna be able to access that big field around behind all this corn. Uh, you can't get to it in harvest, um, so we can't bring the corn and rows and this is a real bad spot in the corn field, but it does get better. But through here, um, we had to leave this open. Last year, this was corn rows, uh, 24 rows of corn so you could get the corn field and that was beans. 
next year I'm thinking of doing a corn on corn um, from here, that big field in the back and this, and we're gonna combine this entire acreage here to make a humongous corn field so I don't have all these little fields here. But anyway, I'm just looking, look at this weed control, even where it sh it's not shaded. Now granted, if you look, there is a little bit of, like this weed here, it's still a little bit green, but it is dead. Three pre, uh, I'm gonna do the exact same thing next year. I'm sold, look at this. I mean, this has been exposed since the spring. This, all this ground here, there's a little tiny weed coming up, but um, I am so happy that this uh, herbicide program worked and it didn't affect the beans. Um, like I said, it's, I'm a success story. I'm a believer. It's uh, it's uh, something I'm glad I tried. It was an experiment. This is a clean field of soybeans. So I'm going to walk. This is going to take me a while. I got to walk out there and walk about in, in the middle of that field out there and uh, give you a sense of uh, what we're working with out there. And one thing I want to try for next year with the custom harvest or planting guys, I want them to move this line closer to the corn. I like them to be just that much space. I want them right next to each other so you don't have this bare spot. Uh, because uh, the, the pre-program in the corn and the post uh, in these open areas where we had problems with the planter, uh, it's just weeds coming. So um, through there. So yeah, next year I'd love it to be closer. And this is typical as to what we have here. You want to see a shale, piece of shale. That's what's in the ground here. Look at all the rocks. All right, I have made it here to the uh, soybean field I have close to the tree line here. This is a nice open area. Um, like I said, for next year, I think we're gonna plant corn from the trees all the way through this field, all the way to the road that you come up on just to make an enormous corn field um, to make it a little easier, more efficient here. But I am just happy as can be with this field. Um, these beans are coming along here. Um, I'm not a big, I'm not big on soybeans. I like growing corn. I, I'd rather grow corn. Um, the uh, guys that buy my corn would rather I grow corn. That's what they need. But uh, soybeans have been in the headlines lately. Uh, <laughs> And I figured, well, I don't really care what the beans do because the uh, price has dropped uh, tremendously and they're going to be pretty much worthless. But um, I think we're going to be okay this year with the soybeans. Uh, the, granted, they have a long way to go yet. The, they are short in some spots. Um, there are places where maybe it didn't cover quite as well. I'm not 100% sure of the population. But planting beans with that uh, vacuum uh, air planter... Uh, really uh, made a difference here compared to drilling them uh, in the past so last year my bean uh, yield was not the greatest so from what I'm seeing this year I think we're gonna do a little bit better uh, with all the rain the rain is what is is growing these beans right now um, there are a couple weeds out through there I don't know if it's showing up on the camera uh, <clears throat> those are those real tall things that have those purple berries on them and like I say it was saying before that was my fault my boom was too low and those things were too high that when I sprayed the boom just bent them over and it kind of just hit the leaves so again on my end with the equipment if I had a hydraulic boom I could lift it up higher and get them but I couldn't and <laughs> it is what it is right now a um, little bit under the trees if you can see out there there's a bare spot under the trees that is how it is I had thoughts of leaving a grass strip up through there um, but it, it's uh, I don't know <laughs> it's not a huge problem for me I'm not as worried about it as much uh, but looking at these uh, yeah there is a Japanese beetle just one and more ladybugs I'm just happy to see those ladybugs. They're doing their job, beneficial insects. So I think this is as far as I'm gonna go in this field. <laughs> It'd take me forever to walk all the way out through there, but um, this is the, really the first time I'm looking at these uh, since my last sprayer passed. So I'm pretty happy so far. Let's uh, move on to another field. More rocks. What's the planter supposed to do with that? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. And that's why the corn is so, look at it here. Just a quick, real quick, we're not talking about corn. Look at this open area here. You could play football in this area. And look at what we got. So 
So definitely some work for next year. All right, so we got dark green in the center, lime green on each edge. The spot sprayer did its job. All right, so I've driven to the other end of that real long field that I said contours that follows this hay field here. Uh, it comes out here, it's like a triangle up here. Uh, you see this little bit of water here from the uh, rain. There's a ditch right there to take the water. Um, so we have to let like a triangle here. It's, it's awkward to plant, but um, I'm gonna show you the worst spot for beans on the farm. And that stands to reason simply because there's nothing there. So we'll just walk a little here. All right, I was blaming this on the groundhogs, but I think it might have something to do with it, but I think these two evergreen trees here, uh, shading the ground here, it's exactly where the, these two trees are. Um, they aren't getting the sunlight uh, that they need. Uh, there's no beans here. You'll notice this uh, organic material, which is some hay that got rained on, uh, some wet bales that I spread out here just to add a little bit of extra organic material. Um, still, weeds. Open. It's been open since spring. A uh, little bit of weeds here or there, so out there you can see it's skimpy. Basically anywhere I have tree lines, they all need to get trimmed. Uh, there's no beans, so a little bit tough here with the uh, fence rows. All right guys, so I just walk in from this where the tree line is just a little bit here and I am very happy uh, to see what I'm seeing. Again, knee high beans with flowers on them. Uh, they are starting to flower here. Um, very little bit of, uh, very few holes in the leaves, uh, which would be, again, um, lack of insects. <laughs> so that's pretty good. They have a good color to them. Uh, deer, one, two. Yeah, I see you. They look like little fawns though. Um, I am seeing some of those high weeds again, those berry bushes or whatever they are. Uh, out there, I do see some of that mare's tail. So it did uh, spray it in, totally solve everything, but I do see a little bit. So this field is pretty big till you get out all the way around and then this goes down around and down in there, there's a, uh, an area. Um, so far, so good, other than a couple uh, stray weeds here or there. Um, yeah, those are just small deer. So I'm gonna keep moving here. So this will be its own video um, Did the ground wash here from all the rain and am I gonna do the waterway? We're, we're, we're working on that video. The short answer. Yes, it did wash a little bit here You can see where that ditch comes down and where the water came through um, and it does have some of these you can see it some of these beans are folded over uh, but the ground itself pretty well stayed in in place. So there, while there are a few beans that aren't gonna make it here, um, second year no-till, true no-till, this is uh, gonna hold here, I think. There's a little foxtail, and you see that's where I missed with the sprayer boom, I think, with the, I didn't overlap far enough with the uh, uh, row uh, foam marker set. So, boy, these get real high here. More ladybugs? That looks like a honeybee. So, all right, I'm gonna end this video because it's getting long. Um, down in there, the ground is very poor. If you go all the way down by the woods there, uh, it's very poor ground, but um, there are some beans there. It's basically the same trouble spots. Uh, chicken manure is gonna be the answer. Next year, we're gonna have corn back in this giant area. Next year, I'm gonna have probably a three to one ratio with corn and beans, maybe. Um, so yeah, right there is that little bit of mare's tails bothering me. So I should go out there and pull that before it goes to seed. Um, but yeah, two feet of water. That's all the damage. The beans are still standing. I'm happy. I'm hoping this no-till thing is going to help with the erosion here. I definitely am. Uh, once the beans are off, I'm hoping to come in in the fall and broadcast some rye, uh, here. So... Boy, I'm pretty happy. So let me do a final summary. I'll do that on the way back down. All right, so a quick final summary here. Uh, I love driving through this tunnel of corn here. Uh, anyway, um, you guys know that I set a bushel, a farm average of 200 bushel to the acre for corn. That is one of my goals. It's a long-term goal. We did 158 last year. I'm not very far away. I don't think we're gonna hit it this year, but we're gonna keep working at it. I want a goal of 200 bushel to the acre of corn. Beans, I never really set a goal for myself. Um, I just didn't know how they were gonna do. Last year, it wasn't the greatest uh, for beans. This year, the beans look a lot better. 
I don't know if I could do 50 60 bushel with beans um, I'd be happy I haven't really pushed the beans or done anything uh, real crazy with the fertilization in the beans I want to get the corn in shape first and then uh, I'm going to do some experiments with the uh, foliar potassium with the beans um, I, d I ran out of time this year and I was more focused on the corn <laughs> that's taller than There's the roof of my pickup. That's, that's got to be close to 11, 12 feet. Um, anyway, guys, thanks for watching. A uh, couple more videos coming up on crops. So it'll be a, like a crop series here. So thanks for watching. Uh, stay tuned for more, and I'll come back with you tomorrow.